a butt. I don't know what words you could say, but I feel comfortable with saying a butt. I didn't want to look like a big ass, <laughs> I said ass. <laughs>
just me bashing on how old he was when we were the same age in real life. And then at the table read, I was like flipping through. I'm like, oh, it's me. Like, I had no idea. All right, up next. Which is where you're so this is interesting. Content. Yes. So I've never seen this. I'm Clarinda. How can I help you? I've never seen this before because when I shot this, I had a panic attack, truly. If you ever had a panic attack before, they're very intense and they're very scary and in your head you're sort of like escape, escape. And when you're on a set, you can't, you can't escape. You have to finish doing your work. So I had a hard time with this one um, because I was such big fans of both of them and I think I wanted to do well and... and I mean, it is Joaquin And it's Paul Phoenix Thomas Anderson and, and you want to do well there. So, you know, I freaked myself out a little bit. But I was shooting Eastbound and Down at the same time, so I took a red eye to do this and hadn't slept, which doesn't help if you have anxiety. And thank God I had Eastbound and Down to go back to because it forced me to continue this sounds dramatic, but continue to, to act and be in something so that I could remind myself, like, no, you have to keep moving. And even if you have a hard time, you got to get back up on the horse. There's this assumption that once you've made it... That you're fine. You're and, fine. And you don't get nervous. You don't get anxious anymore. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, I still get nervous. I get nervous to come and hang out with you. And now too. I feel great. Let's surf. All right. Cowabunga. <laughs> Is that what they say? No, that's a skateboarder. Calabunga. That's Bart Simpson. To a funeral. We ate suits. We're oh, in suits. Charlie. To a funeral. We that's my suits. friend, Charlie. <laughs> we, uh, we wrote this show together. This is Idiot Sitter. And this was one of our favorite episodes ever. Um, we were... We were going to a funeral, and I was avoiding going to the funeral because I was sad because I lost my friend. And so we, you know, I kept making her make stops along the way, and I'm only supposed to go just straight to the funeral because I'm on house arrest in the show. And so I kept being like, well, what's that? What's that? And we stopped at tuxedo shop because I said I wasn't properly dressed for the funeral. What was it like for you to see something that you wholly conceived of, created on your own, make it? Into the big it was in very that way. special. Mm -hmm. It was very, very special for it me. It made me realize how much I love producing because I also produce the show. I really enjoy writing. I think um, I'm working on a script right now, oh, a really? movie. Um, but I, I, I really like the writing process. Uh, so yeah, it made me put on a few more hats, and I realized I enjoy more hats. All right, up next. Do it, do it, oh do man. It now. This was our, I think, our second day of shooting. And as you can tell by the video, I don't dance. So all of these women, too, are the most, like, they're so hot. <laughs> and I was just like, what are we doing? We're dancing. And they're like, you're the one character that has to really know how to do this dance. And so I worked with the uh, choreographer for too many hours for what you just saw. <laughs> I mean, it was upsetting the amount of hours I spent with them. They were like, you want to, again? I was like, yeah, just one more time. And we paused for a moment because I started crying. So much crying. So okay, so why. other than the tears, because that is like a dream cast. Oh, and yes. And in not so distant past, there was this assumption that women were not funny and women couldn't be raunchy. I know. And women in comedy, too, they, they were being written by guys, and it was a lot of times it was... It, it would be too raunchy in ways right. that we weren't, you know what I mean? So it's 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 just a cool thing, and I was very excited to be a part of this film. All right, up next. I love kids and thinking oh, of Brittany. fun projects, and I actually kind okay, of Okay, so I watched this last years. night, and I was sobbing oh. by the end. Paul wrote such a beautiful script, the writer-director. I was surprised to learn that it was written by a man because yeah. it has such a distinct and unique female I know. voice. I know. I think, I think you know, he, he really understood the character. It's based on his real-life best friend, uh, Brittany O'Neill, and uh, I think he also shared drafts with her throughout and just made sure it felt very authentic to her own experience. Brittany's a hot mess. She... Brittany's sort of stuck in her life and she wants to make changes, so she decides After she to... she has a health scare. Yes, okay. she decides to set a goal to run the New York City Marathon, and that's a pretty big goal. So I did the actual physical journey that she goes through, so I lost 40 pounds. Whoa. Yeah, I, I started off just running by myself because and having my sweet sister tape 
me because I, I wanted to see what I ran like when I first started running because that was helpful for the movie. And then as it went on, I got a trainer so that I could experience what it's like when you been running for a couple of years. I ran a half marathon, you which did. I which I have not stopped talking about since you I ran it two years ago. You should keep <laughs> talking about it. It's I, huge. I work it into every conversation. Good. <laughs> You're like, hi, welcome to the show. I ran a half marathon. But you know, you get very, I don't know, existential. They're metaphorical conversations that you ha tend to have when running is right. always laced in. A lot of times I would actually run the lines for Brittany while I was running because it distracted me. Oh. Um, because if you don't do something like listen to music, you find yourself, I don't know if you felt the same way, you find yourself going, okay, that's enough. Yes. You've gone enough. Yes. And it's like, wait, I went a block. Yes. And they're like, that feels plenty. Jillian, thank you so much for surfing by. You are awesome. Thank you for having me. Brittany Runs a Marathon is in select theaters now. See you next week on Couch Surfing. Bye.